It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. Anti-racism is a religion. Now before I get into more details about my argumentation on why I think that anti-racism is a religion, I want to first state my position when it comes down to, I guess, the origin of the universe and my own personal epistemology. First and foremost, I am not a theist. I'm coming in this video from a non-religious standpoint. And so when it comes down to the origin of the universe, I think the origin of the universe is pretty much unknowable and that there is no way to actually know that there is absolutely a creator or absolutely not a creator. And so it's like I think it's pretty much unknowable. But when it comes down to specific claims of gods or deities and religion or mythology, I'm just simply not convinced by those claims. If the philosophical definition is the main authority to which I need to use my judgment for the whole entire order in the universe, I would say philosophically I would be agnostic. But if we're using the colloquial sense as in the person that actively does not believe in any sort of deities or supernatural beings, colloquially I'm an atheist. So if anybody right now are typing the keyboard saying, aha, you're religious and you're saying that religion is bad, this is not, you know, the good place to actually say that because I'm not religious in the slightest. And so what exactly am I responding to to make this argumentation? The main example that we're going to use is a person named Eric Nakab, who is a therapist and an anti-racist educator. In the book of Genesis, the God of the Bible specifically told Adam and Eve not to go directly towards the tree of knowledge and good and evil. Later, Eve found the snake and the snake told Eve, you can actually eat the fruit and you're not going to die. And sure enough, she ate the fruit, she did not die. And Adam also ate the fruit, he did not die. And after the God of the Bible figured out what happened, he basically punished humanity for all eternity and caused original sin because of the action. And of course, women had to suffer heavily from childbirth because of the action of Adam and Eve. So what does this anti-racist professor have to say about sin? Are any of us perfect? Like for real, for real. Like, does sin ever stop affecting our lives? Because racism is sin, right? Like it is. Any of us stop sinning? Because I don't. Racism sin. I'm going to still sin. That could be a level six. I could still sin. Right? I'm going to still sin. I'm going to be an imperfect, sinful person who's still going to sin racially. I'm going to make racist sins. And I'm going to still do it even if I don't mean to. I still want to work on it. And I want to work on it to my last day. Another aspect of Christianity is the idea that the followers spread the Gospels pretty much everywhere. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 and 20, it says, Then Jesus came to them and says, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded to you. So what exactly does he say about spreading the gospels of anti-racism? So the last stage, white folks asking people of color, teach me about racism. I know I've got a problem, I need you to teach me about it. Now we've got white people looking for other white people who want to work on racism. We need to be one another's anti-racist white people. It's stage five. Or if we want to use, let's use Christian language, okay? It's like you've been discipled. And now you're going to go out and you're going to... It's like Jesus sent the disciples out two by two, okay? Now you're going out and you're going out with other people that you're both disciples. You go out and you're going to go do the work. It's hard work. It's not easy work. One final example is the notion of the afterlife. Now, there are many conflicting Christian views on the notion of the afterlife, but for the most part, most believe in the idea of heaven and hell, 
and Catholics believe in the idea of heaven, hell, and purgatory, while Universalists think that everybody, no matter their backgrounds or belief system, will all go to heaven. So, what does the anti-racist teacher have to say about the issue of the afterlife? I wish I was Janet Helms who made the model, because I bet she would have something really nice to say about this. My thoughts, not being Janet Helms. I think that stage six is like heaven. Everybody wants to get to heaven. Stage five is like being on earth. So there you have it, the modern day anti-racist movement has the underpinnings of a religion, it listens and believes the claims based upon faith, it has the holy gospels, which is the works of anti-racists, and they believe in the afterlife and that they need to spread the word as much as possible. So what do you guys think about my argumentation? Tell me in the comment section down below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.